Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the channel where you join me today for a very, very, very long drive in the McLaren 675LT. Now, while this car was away for that extended period to have a number of issues resolved, I always said that as soon as I'd have it back in the garage, I would not be afraid of the miles and it would be going on a big trip. Well, it's been about two weeks, and by the end of the day, I will already have driven it another 5,000 kilometers, about 3,000 miles. Today, it's an 800 kilometer drive from where you join me in beautiful Lake Como all the way up towards Germany to the de-restricted autobahns to get stretch the legs via Frankfurt on our way towards the V8 hotel in Stuttgart. It's a long old drive, this is not the most practical car by any stretch of the imagination for the purpose, but what's it like to live with it on the road now that I've done quite so many miles back on the road as part of this tour? It's a long drive though, let's get things ready and get out on the way. A funny thing, I have actually been here before. It was about three years ago. It wasn't with the LT Spider, but back at the time with my Ferrari FF, when I was taking part in Streetgasm. This entire area was flooded with supercars, all lined up as well around the hotel swimming pool. And back at the time, the FF used to live alongside the LT Spider in the garage. Now today, we're gonna to be heading on out from here. So naturally, the roof had to be down. We're gonna be going up through Switzerland, which I have to confess is not the most exciting drive in the world, a very gentle cruise until we get to Germany, we can open up the taps and have some fun on the Autobahn on the way towards Stuttgart at the end of the day, where I did actually leave the SLS Black Series. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that all is going to be well with that. Over the last couple of days, I've come down towards the Dolomites to meet up with Powerside Lover. We've done some more driving around Italy as well. So the mileage has quickly built up on this car, but today is the long old slog, 800 kilometers in total. It's about six and a half hours from here to Frankfurt, another two to continue to Stuttgart. Geographically, that doesn't make sense, but it fits with our plans for the day. Overall though, the car has been going very well this tour. I was slightly nervous having not driven it really for at least a year, if not nearly two in total in terms of doing a big trip with it, that there could end up being a problem. But starting from the UK, coming over to Aachen, joining the Koenigsegg Insanity with Essa Automotive, then going to the Nürburgring, going to Stuttgart, going back to the Nürburgring, coming all the way down to Italy. Everything has gone remarkably well, even if squeezing the luggage in might be a little bit of a problem because it is not the most practical car. It's in fact not the best car for a road trip to begin with. You often hit the front. And yes, I did stop at McLaren Stuttgart to get a new plastic piece installed under here. I didn't like how it was broken. That's just something that often gets damaged, but ultimately prevents you from breaking the carbon fiber splitter. But even if you do have the lift system, it's a four wheel lift system. It does take a while to come up and sometimes you do just scrape it. When it comes to luggage, there's actually a funny quirk here to show you with the McLaren. If the car was locked, let's say, and you open up, or if, even if you unlock it, but don't open a door and open the bonnet, very quickly it beeps and sets the alarm off to let you know, unless you double press and pop open the door. You can fit two of these wheelie bags in and some other stuff, but this is where the problems begin because we're on the road, well, for who knows how long, but at least a month, if not more. If you don't want to put your stuff in the tonneau cover storage and you want to have the roof folded back, where of course it's then completely full, you do end up having to squeeze everything, literally squeezing clothes behind seats. It works, it's okay, it's just not ideal. Not the most practical car from that sense. And the other thing about the LT Spider is that it's really loud, it's really intense, and yes, I I know I sound like an old man when I say this, but it is quite exhausting when you do a long drive in a car like this because it's built to have you on the edge, to be dramatic, to be an involving experience. So a long drive can, well, wear you out a little bit. Anyway, like I said, the mileage is quickly climbing. So let's climb inside for a moment. Oh yeah, already popped it. We're in here now. I think, yes. 24,400 kilometers, which is not bad going for a 675 LT. It was 12,700 miles when we left the UK, which is about 20,400 kilometers. So we are literally 4,000 kilometers in now. Let me start it though. And in a couple of minutes, we'll be heading on out. Roof down for the first bit of the drive, naturally, as we head through Switzerland. I will need to buy a Switzerland yet. I got an Austrian one on the way down, but today we're heading straight through Switzerland all the way in one hit. But then onwards from there into Germany, familiarity on the autobahns, and a car that in the past well, I had quite a lot of fun with on the autobahn. In fact, VMAX about three years ago or so. Time flies. Well, it's a long old drive. Let's get it started. Head out from Lake Como. First stop, Frankfurt. You do get used to these seats after a while. They might not seem like they're going to be the most comfortable things in the world, the seats from the McLaren P1, but I do actually really like them. And they're actually the derivative, as I said before, of the seats in the AMG GTR. They're both based on the same overall seat. 
Our first stop, I did tell a small lie, is going to be straight to the fuel station because this is basically, well, on the fuel warning light, if you can just about see that. So we've got six and a quarter hours on the navigation up towards Frankfurt. We'll start with the roof down. In fact, I'm gonna put the windows up just to be slightly less blustery. And then we will be making our way across through Switzerland. We're actually right on the border of Switzerland at the moment. It takes like a kilometer and a half until we're in Switzerland. But today we will go through Italy, Switzerland and Germany on a proper, proper, proper stretch of the legs. And I'll give you a bit more of a feel, I guess, of what this car is like to live with on the road. What it's actually like to drive a long distance journey and use it like this because it's far from the most practical, believe me. I just really enjoy it, especially when it includes 20 odd laps on the Nürburgring and driving some twisty mountain roads, which we've had plenty of. Now though, it's time to head to the Autobahn. As we make our way out then, I guess we're gonna be heading towards Lugano, uh, Lugano in Switzerland, and then continuing the journey onwards and upwards. But in the 675 LT Spider, one thing that is almost addiction to do just about every single time, especially when out for an enjoyable drive with the roof down, is with the Active Dynamics panel, to press that once, you've got Sport Mode and Sport Mode, to press this into ESC Dynamic, obviously being in manual, and this is where you get the silly cracks and loud noises out of this car, which are so unbelievably entertaining. Um, it does need to warm up a little bit before they go in, into overdrive. But we're departing now from Lake Como. Like I said, it is literally straight onto the Autostrada in Italy. And then mere moments later, we will be joining, I'm gonna have to squeeze past this truck, we will be joining the Swiss motorways to head up towards Germany. In Switzerland, if you don't already know, Swiss rules about speed or anything like that are very, very strict. One kilometer an hour over, and you can find yourself in a spot of bother. Oh, th that's where this car isn't the best. When you go over some of these bumps, particularly in Italy, it can be really, really harsh. This is the 40 limit towards here. Let's first gear, see if we can get a crack under the bridge. There we go, little one, little baby crack. Always entertaining. We're in Switzerland and no more than about 20 meters across the border I'm gonna wait for the lift system to go up to go over this little bump in front of us because otherwise that would be front splitter destroying because we need to buy our Swiss vignette which otherwise is a big fine if you go onto the motorways plus obviously we need fuel so this system is up I think we're gonna be able to pull in here get a full tank of fuel and go get ourselves some uh, a vignette so we can drive on the Swiss motorways all done back in the car Get it started, we've also now got the vignette up on the windscreen, which is exactly what you need. The other thing I like to do every time I fill up a car is always to reset the trip. In this car, we've actually just done 493 kilometers on a 60 litre tank. And actually we did a tank over uh, in Italy that was 520. But to reset it, you actually have to do this whole process. So four presses, fifth press and hold, okay. Six, seven, eight, nine presses to reset the trip and get back to home. Not the most convenient thing in the world. So for the first little bit here, we will keep the roof down, but I'm pretty sure if we're heading to motorway, that's gonna end up going up because, well, it will get unpleasant very quickly. Um, the border is actually just there, literally. That's the border. And now we're on the road heading this way. <laughs> that's funny, I didn't realize how many petrol stations there are as soon as you come out. Um, clearly a thing, maybe it's slightly cheaper this side. I don't actually know the answer to that question, but there are a whole string of them. So we've got some funky loops ahead, obviously back into active. Um, and then, it'll be time, I think, yeah, the main motorway is just up there, so that's basically where we're headed. We're here. <laughs> yes, that's about it for the moment, given we're in Switzerland. Let's wait until we get to Germany. We are actually literally joining the motorway right here, so I'm gonna do the roof, which you can do while you're driving. Roof is going up, just hold the button, it takes about 15 seconds, up to 40 kilometers per hour, but there's nobody behind me, thankfully. We can get this up, because although it's a lovely day, if you drive roof down on a motorway, it gets really, really intense. It's quite an endurance effort. Now we can put the rear window down because we have a little bit of a tunnel here. <laughs> and we're onto the motorways, which will be, well, there is no question that Switzerland is a beautiful country to drive through. Just look at these views. There's a lake down here. The sheer 
cliffs that you have up the mountains. We're going basically in and out of tunnels. We've got, well, pretty much endless tunnels. We just went through the Gotthard Tunnel, which is about 17 kilometers in one very long tunnel, which um, does take a pretty long time to get through. I guess probably about 12, 13 minutes just driving through a tunnel. Actually, more than that, given that there was a bit of traffic. Basically, though, this uh, this bit is, is just gentle. It's plain sailing, and we've used a tiny notch of fuel to go 160 kilometers so far. I'm actually tempted to do a fill up when we get to the edge of Switzerland before we go to the autobahns, just to see how economical this car can be in terms of miles per gallon on the tank. We'll, uh, well I'll consider doing that when we make some progress, and at some point, of course, we'll stop for a lunch break as well. But all basically plain sailing so far. We are now in Germany. We've got the de-restricted signs just here, but we're going to pull straight off and go to the fuel station just here, which has 102 Ron fuel. So we will see how economical this tank has been, as well as getting a full tank before we go stretch the legs properly on the autobahn. There's a bit of a queue there for the border, and Switzerland has been slow and relaxed. But now it's time for a little bit more of an intense drive, which is what this car is about after all. Oh, we've got a stop sign. Not quite sure what I'm stopping for, but we'll stop. Oh, oh there we go, there was a truck. <laughs> Thumbs up for the truck truck. That seems to happen a lot with this car. I'd forgotten how much attention that this thing gets. Anyway, full tank of fuel inbound, and then we're out on the autobahn. All done, back on the road, and I quickly calculated that was 35 miles per gallon in a McLaren. That's ridiculous. Anyway, we're here now, officially entering the Bundesrepublik Deutschland. This is, it's Germany, somebody's flashing, I can't quite see because I'm in a blind spot. But out we go. This time around, we will again go active dynamics into sport spots. It is obviously very dry and sunny. And by the way, quick shout out to the Carbon Fiber Shmi 150 Future Wear sunglasses with the blue lenses, limited edition, a few sets still available, so check those out with the link down below. But now, as we go out onto the restricted autobahn, this is where things start to get a little bit more exciting, although I believe this section might be speed limited. We shall find out very shortly as this opens up and we can put the foot down. It's definitely on the busier end right now, so the fun might have to wait until we get a little bit further away from the border. Obviously, the autobahn has de-restricted sections where there is no official speed limit, but obviously you have to use your common sense and safety within that. You can't just go back 10 right up the back of other cars all the time. You have to you know, do it where it's safe to do so. Um, in a car like this, you don't need a long stretch to get very, very fast, though, I can tell you that. So, if the uh, Dutch car in front pulls in, if maybe, 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 maybe not. You always have to look for yellow number plates, Brits and Dutch in Germany, because they always stay left, because in the UK and in the Netherlands there are such strict speed limits that that's normal. Anyway, maybe now, because it's completely empty in the right lane. No, oh, no, look ahead, completely empty. And like I said, staying left. Unfortunately, that just seems to be the way. So, it is what it is. It opens up ahead, it's de-restricted. This is where we can get the foot on the floor. 200 comes by very, very, very fast. Back down to that 200, and I'm probably gonna slow down a little bit now. Yeah, you get the point, and we get the air brake behind. Have a look at that as well. Massive air brake shoots up. That's literally, by the way, the only small stretch of acceleration. That was camera on and a little, little bit of go. The rest of this whole journey in Germany for the last, well, 80 kilometers already has been 100 kilometers an hour in traffic like this. Like it will continue again. The rate with which the numbers climb on the dashboard is the thing that in this car is absolutely absurd. 275, that's some immense stopping power as well. I mean, the car does the 0 to 100 kilometers an hour sprint in just over 3, 0 to 200 kilometers an hour in the coupe is 7.9, and the spider is 8, 8.1, that kind of thing. But then when it opens in front of you again, you just drop the gears and you feel the shove. Obviously, twin turbos, you do get a little bit of that turbo, obviously, when you get towards the higher end of the rear range. And it just, it just goes berserk. It's just absolutely berserk. Feels so reassured though when you're firm on the brakes. This car, it's just a mad machine. Yes, okay. Well, that was a nice crack and pop we got. In fact, if I open the rear window, it's obviously the tonneau cover, tonneau space, I should say, it's empty, so we can do that as well. And then you get all of this, the bank goes off. So even though it's very low, very awkward, not practical, and the seats are buckets. Yeah. 
want to go down with the right, you can push it away from you. Which is all quite intuitive when you get the hang of it. Now we've got a road work section, so we've got to slow down, but love it. The thing with the stretch that we're currently driving on is that three years ago, this is exactly where I took this car very, very early on a Sunday morning and hit the VMAX in it, which was 324 kilometers per hour, 201 miles per hour, and it was pinned at that for like 50 seconds, one of the coolest things I've experienced in a car. It was completely empty, unlike how it looks now, hey? Completely full of cars. It's four lanes, dead arrow straight for about 10 to 15 kilometers. So you can imagine the right place if you're going to be doing it. And in fact, it's the exact same stretch, the A5 between Darmstadt and Frankfurt, where we're heading in front of us, heading north at the moment. The exact same stretch where back in 1938, Caracciola drove the Mercedes adaptation of their race car, their Grand Prix car at the time, to 428 kilometers per hour back then, which was the record until Koenigsegg broke it in 2018. Yes, we've got a small stretch to drop some gears. right now is to Frankfurt Airport. The reason we're going to Frankfurt Airport is because they actually have a quick virus testing centre there. Given how much travel we've done recently and it's been chaotic, we were going to film some videos in France that had to be cancelled due to the restrictions from Germany for the Côte d'Azur. We're heading to have a test basically just to make sure everything is safe, no symptoms or anything like that. Just want to, well, try and be as responsible as possible considering we're going to different locations and occasionally meeting with different people. So, not much more than now. Nine minutes, it says, to get to the airport and we will need a tank of fuel, I guess, when we get back onto the roads. But all has gone fairly well, to be honest. We're not far off when I thought we would get here. We're heading back out. That's all done. It was pretty pain-free, it has to be said. Nice and easy. Just a quick swab. That was actually a paid test as opposed to kind of using up one of the other ones. We're just making sure all is good. Now we've got about two more hours on the road from here down to Stuttgart. Should be plain sailing to get to the V8 Hotel, where hopefully the SLS Black Series is still waiting as we go past part of the Frankfurt Airport buildings that we have all around us. Um, out onto the autobahns, back exactly from the first stage, the same route that we just drove in this direction. <laughs> One thing about the car from a road trip perspective, now that I'm in the passenger seat, is that given these buckets are actually quite raked and reclined backwards, they're really comfortable to just sit and chill in. Obviously, we're going down the autobahns in this direction. We actually have the wing popped up at the moment. You can see when you go over about 185 kilometers an hour, it goes into an aero mode. And then when you go back below 120, that sits back down again, which means in the rear view mirror, you have not very much visibility at all, which is far from ideal. Like this, it's super comfortable, it's just really very loud, as you can probably tell, given that you've probably not been able to hear everything that I've been saying, between last and down past an army of Mercedes states it seems at the moment. Nice pace. When you're chilling and a Bory Take GTB comes by. Which does look nice, they gave a nice thumbs up as well, and they've also got a red pin stripe around the window frame, which is unusual. Oh yes, you always spot random nice cars. And, uh, yeah, that's a perfect example. We arrive back then at the Motor World, where you can see the Ferrari showroom. We have rows upon rows of 488s and the like up inside the windows, some Californias and things. Oh, the 488s is still here as well. We're actually going to go just beyond because that is the V8 Hotel on the other side of the Motor World itself. Um, and yes, the car park is around here. We'll go find the SLS which I'm hoping is all good. And tucked in over here then, we have the SLS still here as expected. Mission success. And I think this is the first time that these two cars have ever on the channel been side by side. Two Schmimobiles that have a number of things in common. They are both dark but lovely paint colors, the Orion Purple and the Mystic Blue. They both have bright silver wheels, controversial topic I know, along with silver accents, the pinstripes on the LT, the chrome grill and other parts that you have around the SLS. Both cars I intend to keep for the long haul, both very special to me, both cars that are doing a lot of miles as well. And in fact, there will be a big update to come with the SLS and some news about that in the not too distant future. Today though, we have done a long old drive in a 675 LT. And in fact, just to come through very quickly, if I wake this up, are we gonna be able to see the trip? Yeah, we're up to 25,189 kilometers. That was a long old way 
on the road today. A long, long drive. We need to get the luggage out and go get checked back in to the V8 hotel. Always fantastic with their themed rooms that they have as well. But these two, looking good. I'm just going to need to take this for a clean because obviously after our extended autobahn stretch, it has McLaren some bugs, as we've said in the past. Well and truly splatted from today's adventure. Probably some of those have come with us from Italy and from Switzerland, now up to Germany. But yes, it's good to have these two side by side. There is still more to come of this adventure. It is crazy how many miles I've done now with the 675 LT. About 5,000 or 4,800 kilometers or so since this trip began, since getting it back from that extended period away. It's amazing to have it. Anyway, guys, don't forget as well, we have the Shmi 150 Future Wear Carbon Fiber with Blue Lens Sunglasses, the limited edition set in the Shmi 150 shop. Today has been mega though, so thank you very much for watching. Thank you for coming along for the journey. But that is it for this time, guys, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.